All right, so this presentation is just about the way in which uh, my company and me are helping several organizations do vocabulary management. So it's definitely not the only way you could do vocabulary management. Um, and it's definitely not the only way that we do it, um, but it is a style of vocabulary management that's got its place. Um, and, and so um, I guess you, will, you can make your own judgments as to whether this kind of management is, is relevant to your situation um, and whether you think other places might benefit from it or not. Um, so the kind of management that we're talking about in general before I start showing the systems and things is uh, where you've got an organization who's um, comfortable with creating vocabulary artifacts um, and have some people around who can um, get into depth about the technical artifacts if they need to. So they can understand um, vocabulary source files and fix issues with them. If, if the organization doesn't have such people around, then this style is not for you. <laughs> um, you would need to use a tool to, um, to kind of do all of that for you. But if you, if you do have such people, then this, this might be for you. Um, now, the particular vocab source files and so on that I'm talking about here are all RDF SCOS vocabularies. Um, I suppose, in theory, everything that I'm doing here could be done with other kinds of um, technical vocabularies. Um, I haven't encountered any recently, but um, if you had uh, some kind of XML vocabulary format, you could, in principle, do everything we're doing here. Um, okay, so what you're seeing on the screen is a test vocabulary server for ICSM, so that's the inter governmental committee on surveying and mapping. Uh, so I guess it's a cross government body, uh, cross government body, so state and sort of federal. And this is just a test system. It's hosted on our infrastructure. It's not hosted yet by ICSM. And uh, you can see they've got three vocabularies hosted there. Um, these vocabularies are pretty well known in um, some government sectors, the spatial data space, I suppose. And they've, some of them uh, have been around for quite some time. So this one here, address types, it's just a very simple list of types of addresses as used in the geocoded national address file. And so you can see we've got, you know, a rural type of address, a rural flat, et cetera, very simple uh, vocab. And one of the issues that has been lurking around this vocabulary is the ability for updates to this vocabulary to be absorbed by all of the people who actually need to use this thing. So one way to do it is to just create addresses with these different types and as newer types, new types emerge, shove the types into the geocoded national address database and people suddenly encounter them. And that's, nobody really thinks that that's a good idea. That's what's happening, but it's not a good idea. Better is that you have a published vocabulary um, and people can see the types. And then, you know, you could even have control committees who, who argue about whether a new type of address should be accepted or not. So pretty normal vocabulary kind of uh, situation. Now, until recently, um, these address types were all uh, in a lookup table, um, in a post database table or a CSV file or something like that. And recently, all we've done is taken, and so recently, actually 2018, we took this address types vocabulary, we put it into a SCOS vocabulary format. Um, in fact, you can see that by the created date here, 2018. Um, and I'll talk in a second about the actual vocab format that's used. Uh, but nevertheless, we've got this vocabulary artifact. It's now being presented in this system, this vocabulary system for ICSM, with the goal being that they actually manage this vocabulary here, and then all other systems go and use it from this point downstream, um, including the geocoded national address file. It would actually then become a, um, a client of this vocabulary. Um, one other, or a couple other words about the rest of the vocabularies in here. So that was address types, and that comes initially from an Australian standard, and I might get the number wrong, but I think it's 4189, AS4189. Um, and then there's other vocabularies here, for instance, place name categories. So this categorizes place names of Australia. Again, a vocabulary that is currently managed in Excel by a committee. Um, and my hope, and I think their hope, is that this vocabulary becomes managed by um, ICSM in this vocabulary system. And it's a straightforward vocabulary. It's got categories and subcategories and so on. Okay, um, so the result of this vocab management regime around these vocabularies are uh, is vocabularies in this system. So here you see three. I expect by the end of July we'll have something like 25 or 30 vocabularies in here still in demonstration mode but at that number we should see you know serious amounts of vocabularies and, and people should 
within the spatial government community could look at this and go, oh yeah, that, those are some of the spatial vocabularies that matter to me. Um, so results of management should be vocabulary in the system. The actual management of the artifact does not happen in the system. The management happens elsewhere, and I'll talk about that in a second. The system you're seeing here, VocPres, just displays the vocabulary. Um, it can display status notes and it can display different ownership and all those sorts of things if you wanted to. Um, but in general, the system assumes that the vocabulary that it's displaying is managed. It doesn't do any management for you. So it's very different to systems like uh, Pool Party or um, Top Braid um, Enterprise Vocabulary Net, where you can actually manage the vocabulary in place. This system, not smart enough for that. Um, just an example of the same system in use elsewhere. Here's the Geological Survey Queensland, uh, their vocabulary system. They've got about 80 vocabularies now. So you can pick any of them, geo-admin features, for instance. And here we go, block, map series, whatever. Um, lots of different things. I don't know what these are. Um, but they also manage their vocabularies somewhere else. And then VocPres just really just displays them. Okay, so the whole point of this presentation is now coming up, which is the automated validation and management of the actual vocab content. So, and I'll just reopen this tab. So for these three vocabularies here, how and where are they managed and how is that process, if at all, automated? Well, um, the vocabularies are managed uh, in a GitHub account as files. So here's the GitHub account. I see, you can see ICSM vocabularies and if I wasn't using dark mode, you would see the ICSM logo above that, but it's, it's black on black, so <laughs> a bit hard to see. Uh, but those three vocabularies really are these three files here, one, uh, two, and three. And the VocPress system just reads that file. It, it, it puts into a database and reads it, I should say, but nevertheless, whatever you see here for one of these vocabularies is in this file. There's no other information. So it's not like the system uh, reads that file and adds additional notes to it or maintains additional statuses or anything. It's a very straightforward, what you see here is what you get there. Um, and the VocPress system is just really adding, you know, niceties to presentation. Um, so this GitHub repository then is actually the data point of truth. And whatever changes we make to vocabularies here will be reflected here. Um, and there's absolutely no filters in the sense that if we were to delete one of these vocabularies within 30 seconds or so, the vocabulary would disappear from here. And if we add a new one in here, it would also appear there. Um, now that's deliberate. Um, we've not done such a tight coupling in the past. We've had uh, situations where, say for instance, the Geological Survey of Queensland's vocabularies, they also have a GitHub repository with their vocabularies in them, but they chose to uh, somewhat decouple them in the sense that the vocabularies in their GitHub system, that's what goes into VocPres, but there's a, there's a bunch of human steps to sort of initialize a, a, a vocabulary system refresh. The vocabularies go from GitHub into a database and then VocPres picks them up from there. So that's human initiated, uh, I suppose, slightly decoupled. Whereas in this ICSM systems case, it's, it's automatically coupled. Uh, so basically, if a new vocabulary appears here and it's correctly formulated, yeah, it will automatically appear there. Okay, so what does correct formulation of a vocabulary look like and how does ICSM, or this is GS Science Australia um, managing ICSM, how would they get new vocabularies in here and check that they're all correct? Okay, so this repository that you're looking at here has two so-called GitHub actions, which are just scripts that are initiated on certain actions in the repository. And the actions are listed here. Uh, actually, I will, let me show you the source code for those actions. So the two actions are validate PR and update on merge. Now these little script files um, are configured to occur. So they run when certain things occur. And I'm just gonna explain what's going on here. So when a pull request, so that is a request to merge content is made on this repository, for instance, adding a new vocabulary here, this script will run and it's deceptively simple. It looks, it looks quite small, it is a small script, um, but what it's actually doing is it's running another script and that other script will then validate all the vocabularies in this repository. So if I was to add a new vocabulary called 
vocabulary X. The system would validate vocabulary X, and I'll describe the validation in a second. And it would also validate all these other vocabularies in here. Uh, similarly, if I was to, um, and that's, that's for addition, but it's actually for any action. So if I was to delete a vocabulary, it would validate the remaining vocabularies. If I was to update a vocabulary, again, it would validate everything. And so you might think, well, that sounds like a rather lot of validation. Well, even if we had a thousand vocabularies in here, the, the effort to validate is not huge. And in fact, the cost of validation and running these scripts is zero because of the way the GitHub system works. The kinds of scripts that we're seeing here are run from our point of view for free. Obviously, there's all those, you know, those, those sort of caveats about if, if you're not paying for it, then you're paying for it in some other way. Well, we're paying for it by using GitHub and becoming, um, I guess, fans of that system so that we're incentivized to use GitHub for paid services. But in the immediate term, this script is run for free um, and it will validate yeah, all the vocabularies. Okay, so um, before I get into the details of validation, I'll just show you the other script. So one script is any actions that occur to the, the vocabularies trigger validation. The other script is update on merge. <clears throat> what this does is it says for any update, deletion, or addition to a vocabulary in this folder, push those values over to the backend database that this system uses and trigger the system to restart itself. Uh, so basically, if a vocabulary is successfully deleted, updated, or ad added to the repository um, within 30 seconds, a minute or so, um, the, this system that you're looking at will tick over. It won't reload all the vocabs, it'll just load the changed vocabularies um, and it will restart itself and then you'll see the vocabulary appear here. So those are the two scripts. Now a little bit more about the validation. Okay, so I'll just show you that validation script again. So what this, this uh, validation script does is it says, yes, when a, a pull request, so a merge request against the master branch of this repository is, uh, is triggered, um, it goes and creates a little virtual server somewhere magically in the cloud, and it runs this validate vocab script against it. So let's have a look at that script. And the script, you, all of this is public in a repository, so you, you can see all these things, and I'll, I'll put the links into them in just a minute in the chat. Uh, so validate vocabs. Okay, so this little vocab script, it just iterates through all of the vocabs in this repository, and it runs the same validator against all of them, and it will basically print out an error to say, if any of the vocabs are uh, invalid, it will print out an error, and it will prevent the action that the user is requesting, so merging of the vocab, it'll prevent that action from occurring. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, what does it actually do to validate? Well, it does a web request, this script, for a particular validator file, and then it uses that validator file to validate the vocabulary contents. So what is that validator file? Well, technically the validator file is a shackle shapes asset, so it's a, sh a shapes constraint language template, which is used to check that val uh, the vocabularies contain certain information. Here is that asset, oops, there. Um, and I, I'm not gonna go through all of it, um, but it's a very simple validator. Let's just pick one of the things here. Okay, so, so here is one of the criteria or the, the, the things within this script. So each vocabulary must have one and only one modified date, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and what the script does is it looks for the property modified date and it checks that there's a minimum one of them, maximum one of them, so one. Um, and then the type of that modified thing is either date time, a date, or a date time stamp. So really just three forms of date. Um, so if the vocabulary doesn't contain that, um, then this script will say it's invalid. Okay, so that's the technical validator tool. Where's the actual specification for validation? Well, it's, it's this thing. It's the VocPub profile. So VocPub profile is something I made up. It's not rocket science by any means. Um, it, is, um, it is a schedule of requirements for a particular, for vocabularies, which um, are in some sense quite obvious. So let's have a look at some of those. Um, each vocabulary must be identified by URI. These are fairly rock bottom sort of things for SCOS vocabularies. 
Now, the one we looked at before, the modified date, we can find it here. Uh, each vocabulary must have one and only one. Oh, that's created date. There's a typo there. It should say modified date there somewhere. Um, and then there's a bunch of other criteria. Let's find another one. So that's for a vocabulary. What about for a concept within the vocabulary? Each concept must have one and only one title indicated by using the pref label property, etc. So there's all the, the schedule of requirements and the validation script echoes the written requirements here and in fact contains the same text. So you, you can tell whether a vocabulary has um, passed its validation. If it hasn't passed, uh, you can tell which element of the thing has failed. In general, this VocPub profile basically says you've got to have one vocabulary per concept scheme in SCOS. Uh, you can have as many concepts as you like. You've got to have at least one though, sorry, so one or more. Uh, you can have zero or more collections. If you do have any concepts and collections, they must have certain properties like titles and definitions, very basic stuff. Um, the vocabulary must have certain metadata, created dates, etc. Um, and the vocabulary must indicate the top level concepts and all concepts are, must indicate whether they're within, well, they must be within the vocabulary or within some other vocabulary. And if they're in another vocabulary, but reused in this vocabulary, they must indicate that. So there's a few rules about that. Uh, but the net result is that vocabularies that look like they're valid according to this system end up being files. Well, they don't have to be files, but they end up looking something like this. So here is the address types one you saw before. And what does it say? It says there's a SCOS concept scheme with a pref label, a publisher indicated, a created date, etc., a definition, top concepts, and then those top concepts appear somewhere down here in the vocabulary schedule. This has also got a few collections, this vocabulary. So there's the SCOS collection um, for some purpose. What's this purpose? All concepts collection, there you go. So it's a flat listing of all the concepts in this vocabulary. Anyway, so a very simple set of requirements to match, but if a vocabulary does match these requirements, then it can be displayed quite happily in a system like Bokpres. Um, and also this really ensures that vocabularies are essentially managed. They may be cross-linked to other vocabularies, but each vocabulary is really managed in some kind of file system uh, rather than 20 being in one. Uh, so the validation script, once again, it picks up that validator, which it downloads off the internet. And the reason it does it is that if I improve the spelling and the, and the, and the requirements in, the, in that validator, then whenever this system runs, it will pick up the latest copy. Um, and then again, it runs against every vocab in the system. If all vocabularies pass, then this request to insert, update or delete a new vocabulary is deemed to be valid, technically valid. Now, whether it's valid in terms of the sub substance of the material that's being contributed is, is not for the script to determine, that's for the vocabulary manager to determine. But nevertheless, it would be technically valid if it all passes. And the um, vocabulary manager would be presented with a, an interface that says, there's this request to change, to change a vocabulary in some way. Um, it's technically valid, and then they can decide to reject or accept that uh, change. If they accept the change, then that next script is run, this update vocabs. And this update vocab script, so a few lines of Python code, uh, it takes those vocabularies or the, the, the changed vocabularies and it posts them off to a database, a triple store. Now, this uses a particular triple store that we use um, and that Geoscience Australia uses, but in fact, this script would be easily adapted to pretty much any of the standard triple stores out there in, in, you know, in, in 20 minutes. It's a very basic take local RDF file posted to remote triple store, very easy script. Uh, so let's have a look at the log of actions that have occurred for ICSM. I'll go back. So the log of actions, so the validation attempts and so on are all listed under that repository's log of events. And if there's a very loud bird here, sorry. <laughs> um, and we can see over time that there are some of these actions which have got a big red cross next to them and then some that have got green ticks. So this one here, place name categories, this was an addition of that place name categories vocabulary um, that, I mean, I made it, I put it in here, it was valid. Oh. And then that was, you can see the next action here merged. So it was proposed and it was merged. There've been some updates, add place name categories, etc., And then there've been some rejections. So I did a test 
addition of a broken vocabulary and it was invalid. And so we've got this red tick here um, and that was just in a demonstration a few days ago. And then shortly after I, I committed the actual correct vocabulary and that was merged in. So this system of <clears throat> having a target display system like Botpres, which is quite dumb, um, and then some kind of repository that contains the contents in that system. Uh, this is replicated about four times. So ICSM, GSQ is not fully automated, but hope to be soon. Um, and uh, there are several other servers at Geoscience Australia for international and, and their own vocabularies and so on that use a similar system. And from GA's point of view, they're going to have four repositories and four Votpres servers that all operate in exactly the same way. The vocabularies are stored in different places. They have different management uh, or governance regimes over those, but technically they operate in the same way, which is someone maintains the data store of vocabularies here. They've got all of these scripts to assist them in doing that. Um, if things run uh, correctly and are valid, then the results appear fairly instantaneously in the target system. And the person managing this, uh, the vocabulary content can always come in here and just delete a vocabulary or, or directly manage it. And again, the changes will occur here. We can stop this system instantly picking up the vocabularies from here if we like. We just tell it, we just turn off the, the scripts here that actually push content or push changes. Um, so it should run, I mean, you know, these vocabularies are not expected to be updated every five minutes. We'd expect new vocabularies every now and then. Um, and so far, and, and, and seemingly on, on most actions, changes are made, they put through to the system and it just runs through. We'll run this for a couple more months before fully handing over to Geoscience Australia. And as far as we can tell, uh, the staff there don't really have any problems running these things. Uh, GSQ about the same. They've been running, as I say, a not so automated process, but they are looking forward to more automation. And back to what I said at the beginning, this kind of process is really only uh, sensible, I suppose, for organizations that um, would be able to look inside a vocabulary file. Let's just choose another one, FSDF themes, um, and know enough about the SCOS format and so on to realize when there's a, um, a syntactic or some other kind of error in this vocab file and actually fix it. So if someone committed a, a changed version of this vocabulary and they'd missed this comma, um, the vocabulary validator would say this is invalid. Um, the vocabulary manager would have to know enough about the vocabulary to look at that message and realize, oh, I see why it's invalid. It's invalid because there's a syntactic error in the IDF file and they would be able to fix that, recommit that file and then that would be pushed through. So it's, as simple, we, we think that the, the, the VocPress system here looks quite nice. It looks like ICSM's website and it, you know, the way it presents the vocabularies is um, probably as good as it gets for these kinds of fairly simple vocabularies. Um, you can look at individual terms. Oh, that's not a good one. Let's choose another term. No, we've got some issues there. All right, let's try another vocabulary. <laughs> Thank you, Dev Systems. Let's try address types. No, we've got errors all around. Okay, something to be looked at there. Well, we'll try the GSQ one. I think the GSQ's address type is, yeah, it's a very different address type. It's for postage, but you know, we've got a very simple uh, vocabulary presentation going on here. Um, so there's no real controversy about how this is being presented. Um, and the management at that file level per vocabulary is about as simple as it gets. These systems are aggregating all the vocabularies and you can do things like cross query all the content of all the vocabularies in place. Um, so even though the primary storage of the vocabularies or the point of truth is some kind of flat file listing like you see here, uh, the systems present all of the vocabulary content in such a way that it can be cross queried. And coming up shortly in the next month or two, I hope to make a, a web page that allows you to query not just the vocabs in one vocab repository, but in fact, all of these independent um, VocPress systems, such as this GSQ one, the ICSM one, if it works, <laughs> uh, the GA one and so on. Okay, so 